You turn on your PS3 only to see the message on the screen. Connect the controller using a USB cable and then press the PS button. In other words, you are greeted by PlayStation 3 recovery menu. And normally you see this menu for three different reasons. The first one is you knownly or accidentally enter this menu by holding the power button while the PS3 is off, waiting for the PlayStation 3 to turn on and off while still holding the button, releasing the button and then pressing and holding it again until you hear two beeps. After that release the button and the PS3 will boot into recovery menu. The two other options are either a data or software corruption or a hardware failure. The problem is, to navigate this menu, you need, as prompted, to connect a PS3 DualShock controller with a USB cable to the PS3 console, and then after you press the PS button, you will see the recovery menu, and you will be able to use the controller to navigate the menu and exit it. Of course, the cable that you are using to connect the controller to the console must be a data cable as opposed to charging only cable. So the cable must be capable of transmitting data and also be in working condition. And the main thing is, this menu cannot be accessed wirelessly. You need a wired connection to the controller. And the most important thing, you must use an original PS3 DualShock gamepad. Controllers for other PlayStations, for example, PlayStation 4, won't work in this menu. You need an original PlayStation 3 controller. That doesn't have to be the same gamepad that this particular console was shipped with, but it has to be an original PlayStation 3 controller made by Sony. Chinese knockoffs will not work in this menu. But what should you do if you don't have an original PlayStation 3 controller, and you still want to exit this menu. Well, if you really got here by accident, and there is nothing wrong with your console, there is a way to exit this menu without a controller. To do that, first of all, you need to disconnect everything from wall power. That includes the TV or any other type of monitor you're using, and the console itself. After that, you will need to remove PlayStation 3 internal storage. It is very easy to do. First, you need to locate where the storage is. It is held together by a single screw. Remove the screw and then just pull the caddy out. Inside the caddy, we can see a very standard 2.5 inch laptop style hard drive from Toshiba in this case. Then, without reinserting the drive, connect everything back to the wall power and turn on your PlayStation. Now you will be greeted by another error, cannot start, the appropriate system storage was not found. The PlayStation will show this error for a while and then shut down itself. If it doesn't shut down itself in a reasonable amount of time, for example after 5 minutes, just press the power button to turn it off. Then, again, remove everything from wall power, place the storage drive back, secure it with a screw, connect everything back to the wall power, and turn on the console. If there is nothing wrong with the hard drive or the firmware or whatever, PlayStation will boot normally into XMB and you will be able to launch games and use the console as usual. However, if there is some corruption of the file system or the hard drive is dying, as it is in this case, remember that at the time I'm making this video, PlayStation 3 is a 18 year old product and even though this is a slim model this Toshiba drive is at least 15 years old and most probably it just started to have bad sectors or just died. Since this is a standard component you can replace it with any two and a half inch SATA drive but nowadays your best option is a SATA SSD drive. Even though PlayStation 3 only supports SATA 1.5 protocol and will not be able to utilize the full speed potential of a SATA 3 SSD drive. That means that installing an SSD will not make PlayStation 3 boot faster or load games faster. However, an SSD has much better random access times than a hard drive. That means it is much snappier 
and those games that load lots of small assets during gameplay will benefit from loading from an SSD drive. And also, since an SSD doesn't have any moving parts, the SSD-equipped PlayStation will make less noise. Just bear in mind that the maximum storage PlayStation 3 supports is 1.5 terabytes. You may use a larger drive, for example a 2 terabytes SSD, however you will need to tinker with it so the PlayStation recognizes it and still only 1.5 terabyte will be usable. The leftover half terabyte will not be accessible. But anyway, to repair your existing file system or to initialize a new drive, you will still need to access this recovery menu. Since PlayStation storage is cryptographically encrypted and tied to a particular console, the drive can only be initialized on the console itself. You cannot use another console, you cannot use a PC, that has to be done on the console using this menu. Which brings us back on how do you enter and operate this menu. As I said, the easiest way to do it is to obtain an original Sony PlayStation 3 controller. They may be a little bit difficult to find. However, you don't need a perfectly working PlayStation 3 DualShock. PlayStation 3 controllers are known to have problems with sticks. But if you only need the controller to access this menu, you don't need working sticks. You only need the PS button and the D-pad, and maybe the symbol buttons as well. That's it. These are the only buttons that need to be working for you to be able to use this menu. In the games you can still use the whatever controller you have, just bear in mind that there are some games, for example God of War, that require the PS button. In God of War you cannot open a chest without the PS button. So your first option is to obtain a new, working or partially working original PlayStation 3 controller. If you are sure that you have an original PlayStation 3 controller, but the PS button still doesn't work in this menu, you may want to reset the controller. On the back of the controller there is a hole which has a small button inside which can be pressed with a paper clip or a SIM tray remover tool to reset the controller. After that the PlayStation button should work. If you cannot find an original PlayStation 3 controller, your second option is a Move navigation controller. In the days of PlayStation Move, there was this flashlight looking thing and also a companion controller, which basically looked like half of a gamepad, which was called navigation controller. This navigation controller can be connected to the PlayStation 3 with a mini USB cable and it does have a PS button which does work in this menu. So this is your second option. Your third option is some license controllers. For example, some Speedlink racing wheels are compatible with PlayStation 3 and they do have a PS button and they can be used in this menu. Apart from licensed controllers, Unlicensed knockoff controllers do exist, which do have the PlayStation button, which does work in this menu. For example, this PlayStation looking gamepad from a Chinese company does work in this menu, as well as this Xbox looking controller. Another option are converter emulators. For example, this converter from Wingman can be used in this menu paired with a gamepad. And finally, there is DIY root. For example, this fellow YouTuber was able to emulate the PS button using an Arduino connected to his laptop. This is probably the hardest option, but still an option. In a nutshell, to be able to use and exit PlayStation 3 recovery menu, you need a wired compatible controller with a PlayStation button connected to the console using a USB cable. The only exception is if you're running a custom firmware on your PlayStation 3, most custom firmwares have been patched and this menu can be operated with any gamepad, not only the original one. I am the god of YouTube! Like, subscribe, jingle bells!